Hello, my name is Nafis. I'm a PhD student at the University of Miami. And today I'm going to talk about the shear bolt couplers for splicing FRP bars. This presentation covers the introduction, FRP material properties, and problem statement for splicing FRP bars and mechanical splices. In concrete structures, the corrosion of steel reinforcement may decrease the service life of the structure and may cause high repair costs in aggressive environments. So FRP bars are used instead of the steel bars in concrete members to eliminate the corrosion issues of the in aggressive environments of the steel reinforcement. FRP bars offer many advantages, such as they have higher tensile strength than the steel, they have high durability, they are cheaper than the steel, and also they are lightweight. So there are different types of the FRP bars, like the glass FRP, carbon FRP, basalt FRP, and aramid FRP. But among different types of the FRP bars, GFRP bars or glass FRP bars are commonly used as a structural reinforcement in concrete members. FRP bars have different material properties. FRP bars are an isotropic material. They have higher tensile strength in the fiber direction and they have low strength in the transfer direction. Second, they are linear elastic up to the failure. As you can see in the stress strength curve of the FRP bars, there is no yielding point in the stress strength curve of the FRP bars compared to the steel. And third one, they have a low modulus of elasticity, which affects the fiber reinforced uh, concrete members deflection compared to the steel bars. So the concrete members that are reinforced with FRP bars have more deflection than the steel uh, reinforced concrete members because of the low modulus of elasticity. FRP bars have a couple of challenges like they have a low bond strength because of the anisotropic, and also they cannot be bent in the field. And these limitations affect when the bars need to be spliced in the field to another bar or bent at the construction site. And this is one of the major limitations of the FRP bars in the field. In general, there are two common methods for splicing uh, bars. The first one is lap splicing, which is a traditional method or overlapping two parallel bars. And it's commonly used in the construction because of the simple installation and low cost. And the second method is using a mechanical splices, uh, which use a coupling the sleeve to connect two bars together. And this is the best alternative when lap splicing is not practical. Uh, lap splicing is a traditional and conventional method, but it's not applicable and it's not practical in many applications. For example, in the case of the FRP bars, because FRP bars need a longer development and lap lenses than the steel bars, using the lap splicing can cause congestion and splice location. And also sometimes the spacing of the FRP reinforcement is not sufficient for lap splicing in some cases because of the high load demand or small crack width requirement. And also in some of the codes based on the requirements of the design code, the lap splicing is not permitted for large bar sizes. So mechanical splices are best alternatives when the lap splicing is not practical, as I mentioned before. Mechanical splices can be used for bar-to-bar -bar connection when the bar cannot be bent in the case of the FRP bars, or where the spacing of the reinforcement is limited, or they can be used where large bars are needed in heavily reinforced concrete members or in construction joints for future repair, or in precast segmental construction, or in pre stress concrete construction, or post-tensioning docks for splicing tendons when the lengths of the tendons are short because of the misfabrication or misalignment of the tendons. 
Unfortunately, now there isn't any effective couplers for splicing FRP bars. And also, there is no guideline or requirements in the ACI 440 or ASH or GFRP in the case of the splicing of the FRP bars because of the limited experimental data and research in spliced bar of the FRP. There are different types of the mechanical splices, like the sewage coupler, threaded couplers, and the lots of uh, shear bolt couplers, uh, but none of these mechanical splices uh, that are using and commercially available for steel bars, they cannot be used for FRP bars because of the different material properties. Based on the ACI 318, uh, there are two types of the mechanical splices. The first type mechanical splices can be used where in elastic deformations are not expected from the earthquake. And these couplers need to develop a minimum of 1.25% of the yield strength of the steel box. And the second type of the mechanical splices can be used in elements subjected in elastic cyclic responses that caused by the earthquake, and they are required to develop the ultimate tensile strength of the steel box. In this study, shear bolt couplers are selected to investigate the performance of the spliced FRP box. This picture shows the commercially available shear bolt couplers that are using for splicing steel bars. These shear bolt couplers consist of a coupling slip with some of the shear head screws that are designed to shear off at a specific torque. And as you can see in, the, in this picture and the side end view of the picture, these bolts are indented into the surface of the steel bars. So these commercially available bolt couplers cannot be used for splicing FRP bars because of the brittle surface of the FRP bars. So a new bolt couplers uh, designed in this study and suggested for splicing FRP bars, this picture uh, clearly show uh, of this idea. This idea considers that the bolts can pass through the entire specimens to make a full connection between the FRP bars and the couplers. This picture shows the half of the specimen is considered. As you can see, the, some of the uh, holes are going to drill on the FRP bars and both the couplers, and the bolts are going through the entire specimens. Mm -hmm. In this study, number eight sand coated GFRP bars are used. And uh, in this shear bolt connection, the bolts are subjected to shear stresses, and the FRP and the couplers are subjected to bearing stresses. So there are three possible failure modes. The first one is the failure of the bolts because of the excessive shear stresses. The second is shear or fracture of the coupler because of the bearing stresses. And the third one is a failure of the FRP because of the excessive bear strengthening inside the holes that we drilled inside the FRPs. So based on these three failure modes, the number of required bolts and the thickness of the coupler were calculated uh, based on the design calculation, based on the ASTM and AISC, so the number of the bolts was calculated um, based on the minimum guaranteed tensile strength of the bar divided by the nominal shear strength of the bolts. And the thickness of the coupler was calculated based on the uh, guaranteed tensile strength of the FRP divided by the bearing strength of the coupler. So three bolt coupler specimens uh, are suggested, which consider two bolts, three bolts and four bolts. And all these specimens just uh, show the half of the specimens, not the full one. So the number of the bolts is gonna be double. Mm -hmm. And also the threaded part that you can see at the end of these uh, couplers is a part of the test setup. It's not part of the coupler. Mm -hmm. So the research and the testing is still in progress. Mm -hmm. Uh, the pull-out tests are necessary to verify the performance of the spliced FRP bars with the couplers and to investigate the load displacement behavior of the FRP bars and determine the 
failure mode, the um, real failure mode, and estimate the bearing strength of the FRP bars, and also to estimate the strength of the coupler. The goal is to reach the minimum guaranteed tensile strength of the FRP bars.